Good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Colonel George Bivens, Deputy Commissioner of Operations with the Pennsylvania State Police. Joining me today is District Attorney Deb Ryan and Chief County Detective David Sassa. As you know, on the morning of Thursday, August 31st, inmate Danilo Cavalcante escaped from the Chester County Prison. As an update, earlier today we had a possible sighting of Cavalcante by a person in the vicinity of Longwood Gardens. A search of that area has been underway for the past few hours and continues at this time. Our search perimeter remains unchanged with the exception that we have thoroughly searched the area around two elementary schools previously contained within the perimeter and have adjusted the perimeter to exclude both schools from the perimeter area. We've done this in an effort to minimize the impact on students and their families while we continue with our search efforts. The district attorney and I have an ongoing dialogue with school districts in the area and are committed to providing them the most up-to-date information so they can make informed decisions about school operations. I have told you all previously that we're utilizing hundreds of state, local, and federal law enforcement officers, canines, aviation assets, and various types of technology in an effort to keep the community safe and to bring this to as swift of a conclusion as possible. I'd like to provide the media and the public an opportunity for some insight of the scope of the operation that we've put in place. Following the press conference today, I'll provide you all details of how we can make that happen. As a reminder, we're asking the public's help by familiarizing themselves with the photograph and description of Cavalcante to check security cameras they have and to call us immediately if they believe they may have seen him. Again, we ask residents to please secure homes, outbuildings, and vehicles. Cavalcante has clearly already obtained some clothing and other unknown supplies, and we want to minimize any opportunity that he might have to get anything more. It is very important we keep the pressure on him as we continue this hunt. Cavalcante is considered extremely dangerous, and there is a reward <clears throat> excuse me, of up to $20,000 offered for information leading to the capture of Cavalcante. Anyone with information is asked to call our tip line at 717-562-2987. 717-562-2987. I continue to thank the community for their support and for allowing us the latitude to do our jobs while they deal with what I know are extremely stressful circumstances. We appreciate you all more than you know. And I wanted to also, uh, because we've had a number of inquiries, I mentioned an injury to one of our tactical dogs the other day, uh, Loki, and I wanted to provide you all just a brief update. Uh, he is doing well, has been released from the hospital earlier today, and is expected to make a full recovery and return to work within the next week. And with that, we will be happy to take any questions that you might have. Can you provide some details of the Longwood Gardens event? We saw the helicopter drop very low right off the deck and seem to try to spread the underbrush. So an individual reported that, uh, that he had seen someone matching that description, and he provided us a location that he had seen them uh, running through that area. Uh, and, uh, and so searchers have, uh, have gone to that area. Uh, we're using uh, people on foot. We have horses out there as well that are assisting with the search, uh, tactical teams, and, um, and, and of course, the aviation assets that you mentioned. How, how, close, that area? Is this, how close is this search to that trail camera location? So it's uh, not very far from that location. Which schools were removed from the uh, search group? That was the Greenwood Elementary and Chad's Ford Elementary. So how big is this radius now that we're looking at? I mean, initially it started within that two mile radius, then it moved to Longwood, Yes, uh, so um, it's about an 8 to 10 square mile area uh, that we're looking at right now. It's a couple of miles across, but the, the total uh, mileage would be about 8 to 10 square miles. Is there any validity that he was um, actually at Walmart in East Marble Township? Um, there was reported on sightings. I'm aware of that report, and uh, we do not believe that was him. And given, and, given the, and given the newly released footage yesterday of his escape, and he is so agile, has law enforcement been looking up in trees and the foliage? Um, have you all been looking in the uh, stormwater management within these neighborhoods? And then also, have you been going door to door in various neighborhoods um, for uh, welfare checks? Okay. Yes, to all of those. It's been a very thorough search. Okay. Do you have a strategy for preventing him from escaping via the transit line streets that runs all the way to the Delaware River? 
We do. Can you elaborate on that? No. Colonel, what time was the sighting here long before this? Uh, just, uh, just before noon. Just today? Yes. Colonel, do you still believe he's within this 8 to 10 mile perimeter that you set up? I have every reason to believe he is still within that perimeter, yes, sir. Can you tell us why you have every reason to believe so? Uh, we have had no sightings outside of uh, that area. We have maintained a, as secure a perimeter as we possibly could. And, uh, and then as recently as today, we have another reported sighting. What are the current sides of your perimeter? So it is uh, bordered on the north by 926, on the east by 100 or Creek Road, on the south by Hillendale, and on the west by 52. Colonel, how much bigger is this perimeter today than say last Friday? It is larger. I couldn't tell you what the difference in size is though off the top of my head. Colonel, but this is the same as yesterday, right? It is. Colonel, Colonel is there any evidence that he has obtained a weapon? Anything new on that? I do not have any evidence to that effect, sir. With the lesser I'm sorry, just, just, I'm sorry, just a minute, ma'am. You mentioned the heat. We obviously know it had an effect on the canine officer. Is there any proof that the heat may have impacted thermal cameras at the prison that may have been heated or could not have been working at the time of Campbell Conjure's escape? I couldn't speak to uh, what effect anything would have on the cameras at the prison. Are they talk about the effect on the, can you talk about the effect on the, um, law enforcement members on the ground in the heat working through the day? Oh, it makes it very challenging. Uh, you know, certainly uh, all of you have, have been out in this weather, uh, high temperatures, high humidity. They're wearing, uh, uh, you know, uniforms with uh, bullet-resistant vests, uh, uh, carrying a lot of equipment. Uh, it, it certainly adds to the challenge. Uh, with that said, I have not heard a single complaint, and uh, I believe our people are up to the task, but... but Do they get some break time? Cool down time, water break. If someone needs it, we absolutely get them some uh, some rest. But uh, typically, uh, what we've been doing is we're transporting fluids, food, those kinds of things to, to sustain them and keep them well hydrated um, out to their locations. Colonel, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes, thank I, you I, so much. Um, two questions here: the Mushroom Festival of Return for the 28th year in Tennant Square, um, which is a couple miles from uh, Beach Marble Lower Gardens. Um, the Mushroom Festival will return as planned. Um, are law enforcement, state agencies, federal agencies working very closely with local police to ensure that um, the escapee will not um, go towards the borough? Because some people are planning not to attend this year due to the escape convict, even though he has not been spotted there. So any thoughts on that? Well, we're working very hard to capture the escape convict and not allow him to go anywhere. And then last but word. but uh, along with that, yes, we are well aware of that festival, and we are working with authorities, a number of authorities, uh, law enforcement, emergency management, and so forth, to try and make sure that uh, people feel very safe uh, at that festival. Yeah, and last question, in terms of how technology has changed from 1999 when Norman Johnson escaped, he was here for about three weeks in Chester County, again back in 1999. How has technology changed that is supporting your efforts to find him? Um, any thoughts on that? Uh, as, uh, as with your cell phone, it's changed dramatically in that amount of time. And so we take advantage of some of the, uh, the latest state-of-the-art options that are available. And so I, when I've mentioned here before, we use a wide array of technology. Uh, we have a number of federal partners here with us that I've talked about previously. Uh, all of the assets of all of our agencies are brought to bear. So if like Mud Creek Road is the eastern perimeter, how did you decide to remove Chatsworth Elementary School from the search area? We carved it out by putting additional officers around there. We, we cleared that property and then put officers around it so that we could carve that piece out. The property at the school? Yes, sir. Oh. Uh, Colonel, as, as you know, um, another prisoner escaped earlier this year from Warren County. Yes. Um, was, uh, was found um, some days later um, hiding out in the woods. So it's, it seems like there's sort of a parallel to be drawn here between the two different types of manhunts. I wonder if you have any thoughts on how You know, uh, those are two of the more recent, this one and that are, are two of the more recent examples that we've had. There are similarities between any situation for a manhunt uh, like this. So we try to learn something from each of those uh, um, incidents that we handle, take from that how to run a smoother operation, 
our partners uh, in many cases are the same. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the people that are here uh, from the federal agencies are some of the same teams and resources. I, I was on the Warren County search as well. Uh, so there's some of the same resources. Again, all of us uh, take lessons learned from it. We adapt those to the different circumstances we find. And uh, you know, there are different challenges with every particular search. If we moved 20 miles down the road, there would perhaps be some different challenges than what we have here. We would adjust to those. Are you yes, sir. It is. It is. There's no, there's no, there's no weather can certainly no weather can certainly have an impact on it, um, but it does not take that technology out of the out of the game at all. Um, at times, to use the example of thermal imaging, uh, you can get some uh, some additional hot spots, rocks, uh, different things like that can cause a hot spot, mm -hmm. but uh, it requires you to check a few more things. But it, it does not uh, uh, diminish our our uh, because, desire to use it. Because are you concerned that he is growing more desperate and yet more dangerous the time that he spends out in this weather and being hunted by you? I believe he becomes more desperate. Uh, I believe he has always been very dangerous, and I've said that from the start. He's already murdered two people, one in Brazil and one here in a very brutal manner. Um, he's a very dangerous individual, and he remains so. Is this the eighth con uh, confirmed sighting, or are there more? And can you kind of walk us through those eight? Because it seems like he's going back and forth, or are we out of order on the sighting list? Uh, I, I don't have all of those other sightings here in front of me, but I can get that for you, and we can what talk about, about it another time. But yes, but eight would, is correct. Uh, yes, sir, it would be eight. What about homes? We know you've checked some homes before. Are you going back and rechecking homes? And if nobody's home, what are you doing? Are you checking with relatives just to make sure he's not in there? We are checking homes. Uh, we are talking to neighbors if we don't find somebody at that home, and then each one is handled on an individual basis. Uh, we typically can check, um, you know, tax records, county records, uh, to try and find an owner if we uh, if we've just completely unsuccessful. But the biggest thing we we look for immediately while we're there is any sign at all of forced entry. And we have found uh, some open homes, and in in those cases we try to obtain permission. Uh, otherwise, uh, through exigent circumstances, we can at least make sure that uh, that home is not occupied. Is by there anybody. indication That's that you've gotten into any of these homes? I mean, we've, we've had people contact us saying they believe things have been taken or moved on your end. You I have not been able to confirm a single case to this point. It doesn't mean he hasn't, but I have not been able to confirm yeah, a single case. The family that said he was downstairs when they were upstairs. The, the, the family that said that they were close yes. to yes. not a uh, I, I don't doubt that someone was down there. I cannot confirm that it was him. So that doesn't count as your eight. Have additional special forces arrived, sir? We have had uh, we have had tactical teams from all over the country uh, come in and continue to come in. We have some additional resources that are arriving today, um, and um, part of the team arrived yesterday and will arrive today, and uh, and will become operational by tomorrow. So uh, one of the things when I talk about um, um, after the press conference being able to give you some additional insight of how we can do this, uh, we'll have an opportunity to talk about some of those teams tomorrow and, uh, and, and give you a, a, some idea. I think, uh, and I'll, I'll come back to some of your questions here in a minute, but I think um, what I would like you all to see is that there is an amazing operation going on here. There's a collaboration between local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies. Uh, this is not simply a, a situation where we have a, a police dispatcher sitting and taking a call and dispatching a police car to go uh, and follow this up. It is a very sophisticated, um, well-staffed operation that I believe, um, again, when you have an opportunity to see some of that, uh, there are some portions, obviously, that I, I can't show you everything, but I think um, you would have an opportunity to see enough of it to truly come away with an understanding of the effort that is being made to ensure that we end this as quickly as possible, to ensure the safety of the community. We absolutely understand their concern. I get it as a parent uh, why other parents are concerned about their children going to school, playing in the yard, all of those kinds of things. 
um, again, having been involved in a number of these searches, it is the same with every one of those, and um, and we want to end this as quickly as possible. We'll throw every available resource at it to do it. Do you have a sense of what you're confident knowing that he's going back and forth from the same places again and again? What does that do to bolster some morale out here, or does it bolster? And what does that mean for your entertainment area? There is no impact on morale, as I said a few minutes ago. I have yet to hear a single complaint. Uh, I interact with our people. We have uh, uh, shift changes where we brief out, uh, uh, you know, outgoing uh, troopers and officers. Uh, the morale is high, and I talk to them when they come in after a lengthy shift and working in these conditions. Morale remains high. These are people who are volunteering to come here, many from out of the area, um, who who are volunteering. Now, they're, uh, in the case of state police, they're being paid. So I, I don't mean it to sound as though they're just volunteers, but they are asking their commanders to send them here. That's how high the morale yeah, any is. Any sense of where he's going now, and that you confirmed that there was no attempt at failure at the prison as it related to any heat that may have impacted any of the cameras or technology there that could have aided in his escape? Uh, I cannot speak, again, to the technology at the prison. Uh, that is not my focus at this point in time. My focus is on capturing him. There is an ongoing investigation there that I'm sure will reveal if there was uh, any kind of a failure uh, or whether it was a, a failure of an individual or, or a group of individuals. That will all be determined and uh, acted on appropriately. But for right now, again, the priority for, for me and our focus is on getting him back into custody. Well, you do have a sense of where he's going now. Uh, I have some ideas. Um, again, I can't get inside his head. I. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I, I could go right to where he is. Um, so we use our experience. We use the information that's available to us. And then we also use any number of different techniques to try and push him, to try and make a, get him to make a mistake, and to detect, detect that mistake when it occurs. Well, the 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 Just one second. The gentleman back can, here. Can you explain why you can't just have the perimeter and then squeeze in? And, and get uh, obviously, it's not that simple. You would have done it. But Yes. Why doesn't that work? Uh, for a number of reasons it doesn't work. First of all, it's not just a perfect open piece of land that you can just uh, march through. You've got uh, businesses, residences, highways, uh, hills, valleys, uh, wooded areas that can't be pushed through. The number of people that it would take to contain that area and be able to walk shoulder to shoulder through that area and squeeze and, 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 and the amount of time that it would take, um, it's, it's just simply not realistic to do that. If we were talking about you know one city block or something like that, uh, it would be a different story. It's just too large of an area uh, to be able to squeeze in and push like that. Yes, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, could you provide an estimate of how many personnel uh, are currently at Longwood Gardens trying to uh, track this guy down right now? And what tactics and what technology is being used at Longwood Gardens? You know, off the top of my head, I couldn't speculate. It would be a large number of people. We don't break the perimeter, so we're not moving every single person there. We want to keep the perimeter secure uh, while we move response teams there. And so I mentioned, uh, you know, tactical teams, uh, aviation, mounted detail, um, some, some other foot searchers besides the tactical teams, uh, canines. All of that is brought to bear in terms of the specific number. I, I couldn't give that to you off the top of my head. Is there a question I'd like to know? Have you heard the account of the man who says he brought him into his house? I'm sorry? There was a report of the man that says that uh, yes. he brought him into his, into his house. Mm -hmm. And also whether you're using dog dogs in this round right now. Uh, we are using tracking dogs. Um, and yes, I believe the account that someone broke in, I'm saying I can't conclusively prove uh, that it was him. Has he left any traces that you have found? Traces of anything? Traces of clothing, food, like at the, the, the one in Western Pennsylvania campsite? Has he left any traces at all? I, we have not recovered anything that I can conclusively say was his at this point. Lieutenant Colonel, so there was a lot of speculation yesterday about his uh, training as a survivalist. A few years back, you led the search for Eric Green in the Poconos. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between that search, which went on for about 48 days, and, and the search you're currently uh, undertaking? Again, as I said earlier, there are a lot of similarities between any of these searches. Uh, the difference there was uh, the level of violence. We knew Freen was armed, um, and so both very violent individuals, uh, very dangerous individuals. Um, the difference is uh, with Freen, 
you're hunting for a person with a rifle that will penetrate the body armor of uh, any of the officers that are out there and did penetrate the, the body armor of the corporal that he killed. And so it brings a different dynamic to that, uh, that search. Uh, but there are a lot of similarities uh, in the search as well. And again, that's where I, I tell you that we try to take lessons from all of those and, and bring those to the next job. So Elwood Gardens is west of 52. Is that outside your perimeter? And mm -hmm. I believe today was the first day it was uh, open. Was it yes, open Long, uh, Longwood Gardens proper is out there. They have additional property that uh, is within the perimeter and, um, and it's in the vicinity of that um, that I'm speaking. And, and was that, that area was not open to the public so they could use it on the perimeter? Uh, I can't speak to whether Longwood Gardens had that, that piece open or not. There wasn't anybody in there. Not all of Longwood Gardens is in the perimeter, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you still have men's search men night? Yes. Lieutenant, uh, this is a question maybe for the district attorney or the chief. Neighbors adjacent to the prison spoke to us today about their concern for their safety, not the first time that someone escaped from the prison, but now the second time. Uh, they are curious about alerts. In May, they're, they're, well, they're on record today saying that in May, there was no siren, there was no warning. What, I know you don't speak for the county, but as the chief law enforcement officer for Chester County, how can you assure these neighbors that they're not everyone for themselves out there in, on their property? So I understand that alerts do go out. The first prison escape in May, he was captured within five minutes is my understanding. So I don't even know if there was a time for an alert to go out, but I don't know that information um, conclusively. They are sending out alerts repeatedly through reverse 911 calls, and they keep expanding the perimeter um, and the radius to where they send those locations or those, those notifications. So they are on high alert, and those communities that are affected immediately are alerted right away. So I know that the time frame is very rapid from when they are alerted and, and, until when they have an incident. Concerned though that, I mean, I know it's under investigation, but this is supposed to be a facility that holds in these dangerous people, these guys convicted of murder. Absolutely. You know, this is an outrage. This should have never happened. You know that I was the prosecutor who was assigned to this case, and I helped convict this man, and he was sentenced to life with, with, you know, without parole. Um, we're all upset. We're all concerned, and there will be a thorough investigation, and that will be made public at some point. Deputy Attorney Ryan, can you speak to the victims um, of Deborah um, for a moment and her family? And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that um, the, the family has protection right now, even though he's not in there. They do have protection, and they are terrified. They are they haven't left their home. Um, they're barricaded inside and very concerned about their safety. We do have police detail around them 24 hours a day, but I know they're very, very worried. Mr. Ryan, when is Hal Peter sending back to Chester County Prison? He will not be going back to Chester County Prison. And when captured, uh, what charges might he face? I mean, what, what does this bring uh, from a criminal liability? He's charged with escape right now. That's a felony. Where will he go? He'll go to a state correctional institution. The one that he was uh, sentenced to? He hadn't been assigned to anyone yet. He was on the way to Smithfield to be assigned to another location. Okay. Right, this is already asked, but will you all release the video of the Super Bowl escape? No, we're not focusing on that right now. Our, our primary mission is to get this guy in custody. That's where all of our attention is focused at this moment. Uh, Ms. Ryan, did your office uh, answer the motion seeking a uh, retrial? or a resentencing for uh, this defendant, Mr. Cavalcante. Did, did you, I know the judge denied it, but did you, your office have a response to their pursuing a, a new trial? We did not respond. The judge uh, d decided that on his own. Yes. Just a follow-up question for Lieutenant Colonel Bivens. The talk to someone who has taken it upon himself to enter into wooded areas and look for Cavalcante, obviously this was someone who First of all, they have no authority other than that of a private citizen to do it. Uh, they are uh, risking um, drawing away law enforcement resources because someone else may see them and report them and, and we end up having to go investigate that and draw resources away. So I would ask them not to do it. I can't prevent them from doing it. Um, but they have no authority uh, and, and run the risk of, depending on what action they take, getting themselves in trouble. Is, is 
have to confirm that the, the most recent sighting, you said it was at Longwood Gardens, and it's not Longwood Gardens. No, I said it was in the vicinity. It was near Longwood Gardens. Yes. In the vicinity of a property that's not the primary Longwood Gardens property. Yes. Additional location. Yes, sir. Is it Longwood Gardens property or near Longwood? Uh, I, I don't know, sir. I wasn't out there personally on that one. It was in that vicinity. I just know where the report was. It was very close to where the camera was, which was on Longwood uh, Gardens Mr. property. Mr. what would you say to those who say that he's winning right now? He's eight days. He's up against hundreds of your people. You've got technology. He's got barely nothing to eat, and you can't test it. He's winning so far, not you. Well, we've chased people for a lot longer than this, and ultimately brought them to justice. As I've said before, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we will eventually capture him, and when we do, he's going to prison. I don't consider that winning. There were some neighbors near the area where he was spotted by the creek who were concerned that bloodhounds weren't being used and that scent may have been uh, in the lock in the, in the creek itself. Are bloodhounds part of what you're using to try to track him? I don't have bloodhounds at this particular scene, but I've got other tracking dogs that uh, uh, we have confidence in and, uh, and I'm told can perform in a very similar manner. And, and by the way, we have them from a number of agencies as well. Just to clarify, so the chief isn't impacting any of the tech that you're using to search for him day and night? Correct. Is there any reason, I asked this yesterday, I'll ask the same question, is there any reason to believe he was getting or gotten help from anyone outside of, of this? Uh, it's something that I am always concerned about, but I'm not prepared to discuss that in any uh, any further detail at this point. We are always looking for that and we continue to look for that because even if it doesn't happen at the beginning, it sometimes can happen at a, at a later point in the, uh, in the uh, hunt. And so it's something we're always aware of, but uh, I'm not prepared to discuss it. There was a report that there was a train stop being searched in at least one area. Uh, there was a train that was stopped there. Um, the, the railroads have been cooperative with us. For the most part, what they've been doing uh, is stopping at their normal stop and we can utilize uh, others for surveillance to make sure that uh, no one else boards the train so that we don't disrupt the train traffic. Did that stop occur? No, I don't. There have, there have been a number of trains over the last several days that have come through there. Does he have relatives in, there was a, this was brought up yesterday and I don't remember the answer, but does he have relatives in Maryland who he may be trying to get to or something I've heard? But uh, I can't, that's speculation, but does, does he have relatives in Maryland? Does he have relatives near here who he's been trying to get to? Uh, he has relatives um, in the general area here. Uh, offhand, I'm not familiar with anyone in Maryland. If he's trying to get to those, I, I wouldn't be able to uh, tell you that at this point. Have you spoken to him? Have you tried to get cooperation from him? Uh, we have spoken to relatives, and I, I can't go any further than that. Yesterday you said something about uh, you still believe he's heading south, but you couldn't elaborate on that. Can you go further today? No. Okay. All right. Again, thank you very much uh, for your help in getting this word out, keeping the public informed, and uh, we'll, we'll talk afterward here about tomorrow.